And now there are new fears of terror attacks targeting Americans and other Westerners at busy U.S. airports as well as crowded shopping malls. And our Pentagon correspondent, Barbara Starr, is here with some brand new details. What have you learned, Barbara? Well, Brianna, there are new worries that al-Qaeda once again is going after one of its top targets, a, new, a U.S. airliner. Could one of the targets of al-Qaeda's most dangerous wing be a Middle East shopping mall full of Westerners? They're not particularly well defended and secured. Uh, there are a lot of Westerners that go to them. So some concern recently about um, some of the uh, shopping malls in the Persian Gulf. Analysts say the attack on Kenya's Westgate Mall got days of worldwide attention, exactly what al-Qaeda wants. And they don't have to worry about getting into the U.S. to attack a mall. But that is not all. The U.S. may step up airport security measures. There is concern the group known as al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, or AQAP, has found a new way to get around current airport screening. U.S. officials tell CNN a vulnerability has been identified in airport security because of AQAP advances. Officials don't see an imminent threat. But one official telling CNN, we are steadily tracking significant threats from AQAP. The Department of Homeland Security is regularly reviewing our security procedures uh, to adapt to the threat that we uh, that is faced by uh, our transportation system. The big concern is this man, Ibrahim Alassiri, AQAP's master bomb maker, expert in designing bombs with no metal and undetectable explosives, such as the device worn by Umar Farouk Abdulmutallab in the failed 2009 Christmas Day underwear bomber attack targeting a U.S. airliner. <laughs> The top U.S. military commander in Europe says foreign fighters are a huge worry. We remain concerned about the capability of some of these elements to develop weapons that could be thwarted by our current security systems. Partly, what kind of passports are these people carrying, you know? Uh, if, if they have Western European passports, if they have U.S. passports, they could come out of the Middle East, theoretically get back to Europe, get back to the United States, and stage a new round of attacks. Brianna? And Barbara, I mean, a very busy day. I, while I have you, I want to ask you about Iraq. We've got more troops that are heading there. What are you hearing? 300 additional troops uh, announced by the Pentagon just a short time ago, ago headed into Iraq for security. Security at Baghdad Airport for the first time in years. There will be U.S. troops there specifically guarding security at Baghdad International Airport. The concern is that ISIS has made such inroads towards Baghdad. They've got to reinforce and be there also at the embassy, also at other U.S. installations. 300 security troops going in. This is going to bring the total number of U.S. troops in Iraq to something like 800, Brianna. Barbara Starr, thank you. And joining me now is Republican Congressman Peter King. He is the chairman of the Subcommittee on Counterterrorism and Intelligence on the House Homeland Security Committee. Uh, Congressman, take us through this. What you know that you can share with us about this threat, and, and what are you concerned might happen here? Well, Brianna, I think first we should say I'm not aware of any direct threat. What we're talking about, though, is a... Uh, uh, you know, the whole threat situation has gotten worse. Not a particular threat, but the capacity of a group such as ISIS to attack the United States uh, and the fact that, one, you know, they're now getting a sanctuary. Secondly, this is, the group is the worst of the worst. And we know they've attempted to attack the United States before. Back uh, three years ago, when they were still called al-Qaeda in Iraq, they attempted to attack Fort Knox. So we know they want to attack the U.S. And the concern is that you would have uh, affiliated groups like al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, which actually does have scientists working for it, that you could find them, these groups coming together and coming up with a uh, explosive device which they believe uh, can't be detected. Now, we saw this with the Christmas Day bomber back in 2009. There was an attempt then. And there's been other reports of you know, similar type devices or variations of that device that al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula was working on. And now uh, the concern is that ISIS uh, could be uh, making use of that technology and advancing it to the extent that they could have a, uh, you know, devices that, that couldn't be detected. Now, so, uh, 
So this, in, yeah, this in a way, right. Congressman, is, is if you're concerned that AQAP and ISIS could be sharing information, could be sharing knowledge, and that other affiliated groups would be as well, is this a new thing, and how much does this elevate the threat? I, I would say, I would leave it at this, there's greater concern now, and to me the threat was always elevated. This to me makes it more serious, uh, and we have to be on our guard, and we have to do what we have to do to stop it. We have to work with our allies to attempt to stop it. Uh, you hope that you're wrong, you hope that the threat is not there, but considering the cast of characters is coming together, uh, we have to assume that uh, there can be a device that they would attempt to uh, uh, use against us. Now, again, this has always been a concern, but there's more reason to be concerned now that you have these groups possibly coming together, and you have ISIS, which is so extreme and so deadly, and is attaining so much power in that region of the world. Have you been told about specific devices that are a possibility, but perhaps you can't share that with us? Yeah, there is, there is discussion of uh, certain devices. It's not definite, and uh, I, I really can't go beyond that okay. other than to say that there have been, have been reports. Okay, and so when we're looking, obviously, folks are very familiar with security procedures at domestic airports here in the U.S., it's not always uh, the security in international airports. It's not always as secure as we see here. Are there specific changes that you want to be, uh, that you want seen taken up abroad? Well, I, I think it's important. My understanding is that I, I believe the Department of Homeland Security has come up with certain procedures that they want followed overseas. I believe they're uh, waiting for White House approval. And I think... Uh, you know, the White House should give that approval. I don't want to go into what they are because then we'd be tipping our hand. But I, I, I do believe that Department of Homeland Security wants to have security improved at airports overseas where the U.S. is the final destination. And I, wanted... uh, I, I believe that so. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, please continue. Yeah, I mean, there are certain airports that I believe do not have the level of security that's needed. And we want to make sure they do and use whatever, uh, not just influence, whatever pressure we can to make sure that that security is, is provided. And again, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, and TSA, both of them, uh, Director Pistol and uh, Secretary Jay, Jay Johnson, they realize, I believe, the significance of this threat. They have come up, my understanding is they've come up with, with proposals and they're waiting for a sign off from the White House. Thank you for coming on and uh, talking with us. Congressman Peter King, appreciate Priyana, it. Thank you.